I'm Linda Mal, and welcome to Art This Week. On this week's episode, we visit the Nasher Sculpture Center, and our interviewer, Rachel Livdalen, speaks with artist Michael Dean about his exhibition, Sightings, Michael Dean. Now for Art This Week. Hi, I'm Rachel Livdalen here with Michael Dean at the Nasher Sculpture Center to talk about his exhibition, Sightings Michael Dean. Thank you so much for meeting with us today. Um, so if you could please start off by telling us what types of works are featured within the exhibition. What types of works? Um, people are calling them sculptures. Mm -hmm. um, physical manifestations of uh, typographical ideas uh, using concrete uh, steel reinforcement bar Mm -hmm. uh, self-published books, paperback publications of, of my writing. Yeah, materials that you, can, that you can find, you know, you can make one of these sculptures for under $20, you can get the materials down a DIY store, this kind of thing. And your work explores themes of language and writing often. Um, how do you explore language through sculpture? Ah, um, how do I do it? I do it in a variety of ways. But I'm think it, um, motivated mostly by um, this issue of writing something that's very personal to yourself, mm -hmm. um, which you feel, which I feel is of no particular consequence to anybody else in their life, and yet I still want to somehow to, to share it, mm -hmm. um, which becomes perhaps more about sharing the fact that I exist as opposed to the particularities of a day-to-day -day existence. Mm -hmm. um, my, my, the problem that I have with writing, just as in the conventional sense of, uh, as you understand it, as like, you know, thin black ink on, on a page, mm -hmm. um, that it falls into this idea of kind of interpretation and the hermeneutical pursuit of trying to understand what I'm positioning myself as some kind of clever guy or clever person to somehow, and I'm, it's not really, I'm trying to somehow facilitate poetry in other people or something like this. Mm -hmm. And it feels that, uh, if I can turn writing into an object, people are more likely, more inclined to somehow possess or have a, uh, be implicated in the physical experience of it. And the idea of them trying to interpret it or trying to understand what word that is and what, let alone what that word and a combination of other words, what that might mean. Mm -hmm. um, rather, they're kind of, they're, they're situated as a protagonist in a physical linguistic space that somehow, uh, that's so that language is this um, st stealing the phenomenological fatherlessness uh, of the world, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, yeah. Within these sculptural forms, we see certain references to letter forms, to writing, perhaps doors or shelters or totems in a sense. Uh, within this exhibition, there's a reference to cacti forms. Um, when you're finding inspiration for the work, do you go out in the world and find forms that you want to emulate within the sculptures, or is it more intuitive within the studio? Um, of late, this idea of thinking about how, you, how I might manifest somehow language in space, mm -hmm. um, the idea of, and thinking about what happens to me in the world, what, what am I looking at in the world where I don't feel as though I'm failing, in terms of interpret interpreting something. So if I'm sta standing looking at a tree and having a moment of intensity with this tree, there's not a sense that I'm failing in relation to it. It's, I can't get it wrong. It's, I exist and that's good, right? Mm -hmm. So in relation to this idea of nature then, you know, and thinking about um, looking at the tree, looking at the, the logic of the tree, the rules of the tree, thinking about grass and, and things that manifest apparently of their own accord, weeds and things like that. Um, I was wondering that I could somehow, yeah, like s s steal, well, I've just been kind of, this sounds uh, cheesy, right? Pouring my heart into like mm -hmm. seeing what's around me, the physical nature. I've got a back garden for the first time in my life and with my house. So being able to just spend time seeing the different species of grass and curiously thinking about, I mean, in the past, I uh, used the idea of the body of grass as, as a way of delivering text and mm -hmm. did il illustrations of botanical illustrations of, of grass that would somehow spell a word like cope as though somehow they were able to spell our emotions like around, around us in the city or something. Mm -hmm. But this, maybe the, the logic of the gardener or something and mm -hmm. seeing how the works, um, this I, having a text and seeing how the works grow and, and, and unfurl an, an idea of them. Um, in relation to this show specifically, I was thinking about an idea of the meristem, which is this thing in, in cell biology or what have you, 
this is me just using the internet, right? Mm -hmm. um, this moment of, uh, you know, when you're looking at this bud coming out of a tree and for whatever reason it knows that it's going to become this other thing, mm -hmm. somehow buried within this meristem as this, uh, this thing of cell division and cell differentiation. So, you know, as a writer as I am, I'm always looking for words that do it for me and mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of cell division and cell differentiation if I look around me. Mm -hmm. And so, um, out of the context of the meristem and this idea that somehow I could have things grow and inf uh, informed in a way by their own logic. So you have, you have an alphabet, you have an emotion that you try to, to hold on to, and you try to have that occur with, it, like, with the materials that you have to hand. Mm -hmm. um, so the, this meristem, right, it happens mm -hmm. in two places. It happens at the root and it happens at the shoot of a mm -hmm. plant. Again, two words which I can build my build my soul around for a moment in terms uh -huh. of thinking about uh, what, what, is, what is done unto something, what, is, what happens to a plant in order to make it grow the way that it does and how we might break something in order to produce roots or how we might enslave an entire community and in in, you know, keep them in one place mm -hmm. in the hope that maybe they'll produce some random crazy poet. No, it's not like that at all. Just keep them in their place. But an idea of kind of, you know, to, uh, harming something or, yeah, I don't know. I want to um, turn now to the interest in, in books and how uh, language occurs within the books, yet we're seeing the book form be used in different ways throughout the, the entire exhibition. Could you talk a little bit about your interest in the book form? Uh, yes, I can. I mean, essentially, it's, if, if, it's uh, my first experience of uh, an idea of where words are, words are kept. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Books are very precious to me, particularly because there was a moment in my life where I really wanted to have access to books, but mm -hmm. the libraries were closed and all of this. Oh, I, but I won't go into the, 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 the sad sob story of a um, sub proletariat in the north of England. But um, I don't. I, how can I? How can I say? I mean, what do I do to books? I I just I try to. It's this thing of normally normally a book contains something that you're supposed to understand. The idea mm -hmm. that I can transform it in, into a body that you experience. Mm -hmm. I'm soaking the books in, in ink, mm -hmm. turning each page into ink, um, a way of um, wrestling then with that soggy, soggy um, paperback. Mm -hmm. I, can turn that, I can turn that straight white form into a saggy, soggy muscle. Mm -hmm. um, I can have the works look as though they've been subjected to something and then those pages haven't been um, soaked in blood red ink are, sh are shooting or emanating from its surface. Mm -hmm. I can use that, I mean, it's kind of like I, I, I made a book specifically for, e I make a book usually specifically for each exhibition. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the book uh, somehow titled Scare Hate. I say somehow because I arrived at it by accident in a way. Um, I use it, some, it becomes raw material in the exhibition, this mm -hmm. physical manifestation physical manifestation, these sculptural forms that you talk of, mm -hmm. um, as, as, as a way of, um, of publishing that text. Mm -hmm. And so if it happens that this big hulking body is rocking and needs to be shored up or propped up from one side, then I can take, tear out a couple of pages, fold them up in a way and, stop, and I can cure, cure its problem. Mm -hmm. and, and there it can stand without a wobble. And then there's also this, this accidental, the, the coincidence of you understanding or finds, realizing that that's a page from a dictionary, but it's mm -hmm. actually, I mean, I'm trying, to get an I'm trying to get you to have an experience without your understanding that now I'm having an experience, mm -hmm. you know, that somehow mm -hmm. that is happening to you and you're trying to, this, this part of me trying to have you feel as though you're possessing or that any meaning that you find in, in the show is your, your fault, you know, it's not, it's not really, it's not mine, I'm just kind of giving you the notes and you're playing it. So I am just going, I don't know, is that making any sense at it all? It is, it is. Yeah. Um, and, and thinking That's about good. how the book forms are becoming raw material within the space, I'm, I'm curious about the other materials that you're using, the use of concrete. You mentioned being able to spend $20 and, yeah. and make these works. Um, could you talk a little bit about why these industrial materials? Um, are you thinking about um, almost a de-romanticization of, of this traditional sculptural process? Um, 
I didn't train as a, as a sculptor. Mm -hmm. I've looked at lots of books on sculpture mm -hmm. and I saw, I saw a lot of bronze and I saw a lot of plaster and I saw a lot of materials you might buy down in, art, in an art store or see in an art school and stuff. But I felt that if I, I feel like I'm failing if I go to buy my materials at an art store. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, this, it wasn't necessarily also like an intellectually informed decision. It's based on a chip on my shoulder that, fuck you, mm -hmm. I can make art for nothing with the materials that anyone can use, this kind of idea. Mm -hmm. There was a moment where, you know, again, sorry, sob story, you know, uh, looking at, you know, drooling over books on uh, Japanese ceramics or what have you, um, and thinking about how I could produce that, but fuck knows if I know anyone who does pottery, I mean, has a kiln or this kind of beautiful pursuit. Um, but I found that I could do it with a bin bag and some cement, and I could mm -hmm. imitate those things, and there seemed to be something I dare I say earnest or something. People mm -hmm. can see that material, they can see specifically how it's been made. They recognise the materials from their kitchen or from the step they've just repaired. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the sense that somehow you exist in the same world as the materials mm -hmm. and it's not, it's not something that you have to dress up in order to go and experience. Thinking about the process in which you're making these forms mm -hmm. with uh, casting in plastic bags and, and materials that are easily accessible, yes. do you find that when you're in the studio um, you're working from a place of spontaneity or are you planning these forms ahead of time? There is a plan with the typographical works, mm -hmm. in the sense that there is, a, there is a set of rules that the work follows. Recently there has been um, a heated ur urgency, um, mm -hmm. facilitated also by kind of learning really basic things. I'm, I'm a very timid maker, it takes me a long time to kind of have the courage to dive in and do it. Mm -hmm. So it's taken me about 10 years to get to this point where I can just, and learning to weld recently facilitated larger, whole, larger bodies mm -hmm. and also reduced thin skeletal frames. Um, but I, I, I am interested in, in my, I mean, I'm thinking about my own work and talking to some friends recently about how they feel like I've made some shift from, from kind of like a Gutenberg idea of the, the letterpress or, mm -hmm. and, uh, or to a more, a more digital idea of, mm -hmm. of cut and paste or mm -hmm. This idea of the of the handwriting and a notion of um, there's something existing for a moment, like like speech, or a graffiti moment, the sense of throwing something up on the wall, mm -hmm. or a territorial pissing, you know, somehow. Um, yeah, the the speed involved for all, in all of these things are are kind of really important, mm -hmm. and I feel maybe that the urgency with which you make something again is somehow reflected in it, uh, uh, maybe it helps to somehow. Uh, transcribe the position of the viewer in relation to something because they have this moment of maybe maybe this work isn't finished or maybe it's somehow mm -hmm. it's it's on the way to becoming something. Mm -hmm. Well, I do have a question about um, how the sculptures take on human aspects, whether it's through scale or um, certain human-like features within the works, mm -hmm. limbs, for instance. So do you see the forms as relating to the human body while you're making the work? And do you ever manipulate features to make the works seem more figurative? Well, um, I had the sense of, I, you know, I don't really know American culture other than the stuff that through a process of os mm -hmm. osmosis, whether I like it or not, infiltrates my mm -hmm. VHS-based dreams or something. But. Um, I had the sense of bringing myself and my family to this country and, uh, and recently I've been basing the dimensions of certain works on the dimensions of my family, mm -hmm. myself, my wife and my two children. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of where I started off with this pink family. They're based pretty much on the dimensions of my family and then each work has my, starts off with my height, my wife's height and my two kids' height and their mm -hmm. width. So there's about four families in and amongst these, these works and there's something in a sense of perhaps of for me, there's a moment you have four vertical pieces of concrete. That moment that somehow there's a realization, this kind of weird sense of love or commitment, or I mean, love is a big word to use, I'm sorry, but like a sense that they are a family mm -hmm. and that you can kind of give that emotion to something that's, it has no soul, it's concrete, right? Mm -hmm. um, I find that um, 
totally fucking hardcore. Like mm -hmm. I want, I want that experience. It's, it seems to me that if had I had the luxury of reading writing and it working for me, this idea that you can animate maybe a flat black inky bone on a piece of paper, but you, that can become your whole soul or something. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of some kind of weird alchemy, but I, I don't know. Well, also congratulations on being shortlisted for the, the Turner Prize for oh. your exhibition, Sick Glyphs. And um, could you describe that exhibition briefly and how it compares with the work that you've presented here at the okay. Napture? Hmm. The, main, the main difference is perhaps like the, the body politic of the show, the installation at the, uh, at, the, at the Tate was very much about utilizing each of these for each, each of these kind of like human-sized forms, if you, if you will, and um, using those bodies to produce borders, or using those bodies to produce walls, or that there was this text that I wrote in relation to shores, and that's something you know, as in the seashore, mm -hmm. or a shore we might use in order to rail against something coming in, mm -hmm. living on an island as I do. There's a constant talk of immigration, and mm -hmm. actually it's happening everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So this, uh, this sense that even just to exist as a body is asking you which side, which side are you on? Are you on my side or are you not? This kind of... In that work also, of course, you have, you have to think um, as, 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 a, as a, you know, what can I say? The Turner Prize is this moment where you get potentially to communicate to every, every person in your country. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, sorry, it's, quite emo it's, very, it's a very emotional thing. Mm -hmm. And so all of the urgency that comes with suddenly people, so suddenly people are going to be looking at my work and I had this moment to be able to declare, for example, what the poverty line is for, for, for uh, uh, a husband, a wife and two mm -hmm. kids, sorry, or just you know, two people and a kid, mm -hmm. forget about the wedding or marriage or all that stuff. To declare the poverty line and suddenly for people to be able to be, to be aware that uh, in relation to what everybody else is earning, if you're earning anything under £20,000 that you're living below the poverty line. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people who are living under the poverty line and I know a lot of people who didn't realise they were living under the poverty line and to, to discuss that with them and to see the look on their face when they realise maybe I should be ashamed or maybe I should be proud. Um, yeah, that was a fucking hardcore moment to be able to, to do that. Mm -hmm. So my job is done. But the idea of being a competition is a kind of a bit strange. So, mm -hmm. but um, I got to walk past Jacob Epstein sculptures and Henry Moore's every day <laughs> to install that work. It was a good time. Yeah, that's yeah. really exciting. And um, my last couple of questions deal with how you arrange the sculptures within the space. Um, how does the space of the gallery influence the sculptural works? In the same way that when you're given a blank page and you have your text somehow that you, and you want, to dis, you want to display it accurately and to somehow, as I've said earlier, you know, to, to, to invite people and to implicate people in, in an experience of something. Mm -hmm. So in this case it was um, perhaps like a, it's two things, it's, a la it's kind of like an idea of a landscape. Mm -hmm. And more than, more than that, perhaps, I'm thinking about, as I've made these works, there's a, there's, a mo there's a moment of intensity where somehow the work describes itself enough that I, it's wrong of me to add anything to it, for, for want of a better way of putting it. And um, I'm thinking about this moment of transcription. You know, when I came to, came to Dallas, and sorry to talk about the whole JFK thing, it's so boring, I know, but my dad was obsessed with this Buddha movie, no? Mm -hmm. So I go down and I go down uh, Elm Street and I go find myself in this landscape and I'm standing in this place without really thinking about it in order to, 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 to stand in the place in which this situation with the, you know, the, the gashy graf graffiti X where he lost his brains, kind of, that's there, mm -hmm. and you, you're standing. And this most, I'm kind of thinking of this moment of transcription in a way that somehow this is a Buddha dude kind of, he filmed this, he wrote out this, the, the architecture of that moment, which because we're looking at it all the time, I'm not obsessed with this, honestly. So I, but um, that moment to somehow, to have somebody stand and to be able to look at the work um, and to, it's kind of like a symmetrical intimacy in a way. Mm -hmm. um, that the show itself is not one big money shot, mm -hmm. but people will find themselves Framing it, I hope. Mm -hmm. I've just, I don't know, it's also stuff like Instagram and things. Mm -hmm. This crazy moment that, you know, I've been making work for a long time, but I never really knew how people were framing their, their mm -hmm. view of the work. Of course, now they, they can 
they, they stand and they take it. And when people are standing in the same place as I was when I thought, that is it, mm -hmm. then that sense that we're both standing in the same place and the work is the middle, mm -hmm. and we're both equal, perhaps, almost, in relation to this fucking thing that's happened. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I want, mm -hmm. yeah. And when you arrange the materials and the sculptures within the space, thinking specifically about the book forms on the floor or other smaller objects on the floor, are you trying to manipulate the way viewers interact with the work? Are you trying to slow viewers down? Are you trying to make viewers uh, a little more aware of their surroundings when you place things? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there is a... When, you, when you, the, your first experience of the space, when you come down the stairs, is that it, it, it gives you everything. Mm -hmm. You know, that, this whole glass, this whole glass facade, and, and the whole space is this open heart waiting for you to, what have you. And um, so f there was a, a decision to, to slow this process mm -hmm. down and to, to, to whitewash the windows, mm -hmm. which perhaps is a cultural reference that's lost here. At, at, in where I come from, when a shop is closing down, we whitewash the windows mm -hmm. to stop people from looking in to see what's left. Um, this is my reference for that, although. And I found myself um, thinking about a moment where the family, you know, against this closed down store. This is mine, and please don't find it in the work <laughs> unless it's there for you. But um, to have these little eye holes, this moment, uh -huh. and the sense of, you, as you're saying, to make yourself aware, this idea that might, you could be in the show and, and you look and you, someone is watching you, mm -hmm. and this kind of sense of discomfort. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I mean qualities of violence in the sense, all of these moments of discomfort and being aware of ourselves, mm -hmm. they're incredibly revealing and tell us so much about our fears or so. Mm -hmm. um, so I positioned essentially the pink family in relation to the eye holes. So when you look through, you, ah. will, you will see, you know, each corresponding figure. Mm -hmm. and, there's some, and also when you look through, there's another green family on the other side. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and it's the same. Using that somehow, um, I knew that I'd made these, uh, these trees, lost true leaves. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, my first, my first role was to see how that, what that family would do in relation to, to, these, to these three trees. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, that was the, the anchor point for setting in place the rest of the exhibition. And of course, something that we haven't really talked about is the lighting. Mm -hmm. In relation to an idea of roots and shoots, and an idea of um, what you would, a kind of environment you would give for something to grow. Mm -hmm. um, it's not by accident that the colour and the flesh is on the, the light side and on the side in the dark. There's there's less flesh, mm -hmm. and just a hopeful, um, a dream, a shoot, a root towards becoming flesh. I don't know, or maybe it's the other way around. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Congratulations on this really spectacular exhibition. Oh, kind of you, thank you very much. We want to thank Michael for speaking with us. For more information on the exhibition, go to nashersculpturecenter.org. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. I still got your polo